guess first off, can you just kind of take us through your like post game experience and, and what that was like to be a part of kind of all that on the field madness mm -hmm. and celebration? Yeah, it, it was a pretty special moment, uh, you know, not only for us as players, but, you know, for the university. Um, you know, any anytime you have, you know, that kind of, you know, coming together, um, especially in a, a great night sellout crowd like that. Um, it, was, it was really good to see, you know, and, you know, everyone in the university is, is you know, happy from classmates, teachers, professors, workers. Um, so it's really kind of good to see everyone kind of coming together. I know you guys don't really get swept up in kind of the bigger picture stuff, or is it like moments like that where you can really kind of say, at least in that second, like, hey, I appreciate what's happening right now. Yeah, yeah, you know, and, and and at least for me, and I know talking to a couple other guys, you know, it, it makes every single hard thing that you do worth it. You know, all those times in you know August and camp, you know, when you're you know you're tired, you know, pushing that extra rep or that extra you know period in practice for that moment right there, you know, it's all worth it. Um, and it was pretty special. As far as what it took for the defense to find a way to respond from from the Carolina game. What went into it, and, and I guess what kind of let you guys come up with some, some key stops in that game? I, I think it was just as a group as a whole, we had to make a decision. You know, um, um, obviously the Carolina game was 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 not a performance that we 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 took uh, that we like to see, um, and so you know we had two decisions: we can keep you know in, in our kind of point of view letting the team down a little bit, um, or we can step up and and you know help our high powered offense and. You know, I feel like we came out there and 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 really put on a good performance. Um, a lot of a lot of missed stuff and stuff we need to clean up. But you know, if we can keep building and stacking on good performances like that, it'll be a you know a good finish to the year. Was there like a, a voice or two on the defense that really kind of helped push that message home, or you know, even was was there like some support from offensive guys as far as trying to pivot away from that? Defense I, I think the, the 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 thing that came out the most is you know obviously you know coaches and stuff can can try and pump you up, but it, it was the group more so, you know, the players, especially starting with the older guys, starting with Luke, Jasir, you know, Miles, Sue, uh, Rondell, you know, Smenda, all these older guys that kind of, you know, were like, you know, especially for the guys that were going to be their last home game, they didn't, you know, want us to, you know, uh, go out and put on a bad performance. So it was really good to see that, you know, it's not just the, the coaches, you know, pushing you, it's, it's your teammates, your players, and, you know, anytime it's a player-led team, player-led defense, you know, that's when, you know, kind of the best product comes out. You know, NC State's coach has said a few times at the beginning of this week that they would have liked to have run the ball a little bit more. They didn't call a lot of run plays to begin with in that game, but what kind of went into, you know, I guess maybe making them just kind of look away from that part of the, part of the game plan a little bit? Well, I, it all starts up front. Um, you know, our D-line did a tremendous job. And obviously, you know, facing the Carolina game, we, we got a lot of backlash in defending the run. And I think, you know, with our, our, our defensive line linebackers, they came out and, and shut that run down. And NC State kind of said, uh, you know, we can't run the ball against these guys. So we're going to have to try and get on the perimeter. And, and, you know, again, it's a testament to that D-line and linebacking crew. Good. All right. We'll turn it over to Zoom here for Nick. Hey, Nick, uh, just walk us through uh, your interception in the game. And how good it is to get back, uh, put another notch on that ledger. Yeah, you know, it was good. Um, you know, anytime you get a stop as a defensive team, it's always, you know, important to get the ball right back to the offense. And, um, you know, it came at a good moment. Um, and, you know, it was happy for me personally to, to kind of get one under my belt for this year. But, uh, you know, kind of keep going and, and keep trying to, you know, get stops for the defense. So far, what is it you think, what, do you, what are you all expecting, I guess, to get out of the Clemson offense that has struggled at times, but maybe might have found some footing last week against UConn. We're expecting their best, and we know they're going to get their best. You know, it's kind of that that time of year. They're they're used to this time of year. This is you know championship football. You know, coming up, and obviously they've been very experienced and and in, in that uh, you know area. So we're expecting their best. We know we're going to get their best, and you know it's going to be a great challenge. And 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 there's nothing else that we we'd want. We we we're accepting the challenge and can't wait for it. And, and Nick, you talked about uh, kind of building off that performance against NC State. What are some of those areas that you want to build off of and some areas where you think you guys you know, need to fix heading to Clemson? Um, I think, you know, you know continuing to, to do a good job, stopping the run, you know, is going to be important. You know, and then when teams do, you know, trying to tax on the perimeter to, you know, stay disciplined and, you know, whether it's, you know, 
you know, letting up easy access or, you know, not biting on double moves and getting, you know, explosive plays in behind. You know, we when we keep teams in front, you know, and, and make them drive the ball on us, I feel like we're a really good defense. Heading to Death Valley, does that add a little extra, you know, excitement into this matchup? I think it does. You know, as a, as a, as a little kid, you want to play in the best environments and, you know, the, with the crowd and, and, and loud noise and, you know, playing in such a historical stadium like that, it's, it's, uh, it's something you really look forward to. Hey, Nick, is, is there any talk about – I mean, I know you all got, usually look at one-week season and just focus on what's ahead of you. Is there any talk about the macro aspects of this game in terms of being able to completely lock up the ACC Atlantic or the fact that the Deeks haven't won against Clemson since – like yeah, at Clemson since 1998? All we're focused on is they're going 1-0. That's not a fun answer, Nick. Yeah, well, <laughs> sorry to disappoint you, but 1-0 this week, and then, and, and, you know, whoever we're playing next week, you know, we'll go 1-0 against them. So, Nick, do you ever remember a wilder time than about the last six minutes of the first half and the first four or five of the second half? It, uh, it, it was wild. There was definitely a lot of adversity, but, um, you know, I think how we handled that was, was the main talking point, at least for me, is – you know, it, it could have been very easy to, you know, roll over and you just say, oh, well, you know, they're kind of, they're just, they're it's their night, their game. But, you know, we didn't, we came back strong and, you know, obviously ended in a great night. They're pretty good. All right. Thanks, Nick. Appreciate it. Thank you.